open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron Williams. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are radio for the local craft beer movement broadcasting from Monday Night Brewing in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm Aaron Williams. And I'm Tim Dennis. And we've got Brian Hewitt here with us as well. Brian, how in the world are you doing today? I'm doing well in the world. That's awesome. in the world? Good deal. Well, you know what? On this episode of Beer Guys Radio, we have an awesome show lined up for us. We're going to talk Belgian beers. And we have Mr. Craig Torres with us from Hop City. Craig, thanks for joining us. It's truly my pleasure. Absolutely. And Jen Price is here with us as well. And Jen is the author of The Chick's Guide to Beer. Hey, y'all. And the owner of the Atlanta Beer Boutique. That's right. Very cool. So we're going to talk about all of those things today. Yeah, we got lots of stuff going on. And, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and get the scoop of uh, what's going on there. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to talk beer. We do. We do. Now, you were on the road this week, I was on the road. The family called. And so we had to do a little vacation down uh, down in Florida way. And, uh, you know, the funny thing is, is that when you go to Florida, of course, you can drink a lot of great Florida beers. Uh, You know, MIA Mega Mix is one of my go-to that I usually have. But uh, you can also get beers that are distributed not here in our home state of Georgia, but also Elsewhere across the country, so I was actually able to get some Surly, some Talent the Ox Man, and right. uh, okay. you know, and some Boom Sauce from Lord Hobo, which uh, again, a couple of my favorite IPAs. I was just really psyched to see them down there. Very cool. like, and it was your birthday. Aaron. It was my birthday. I didn't want to Happy mention birthday. that. Happy birthday! Yes, celebrated you. your birthday this weekend. I'm kind really of old. It's very sad. <laughs> but you really stay young by going to Disney. <laughs> there for your you birthday, go. Right? That's exactly Absolutely. it. So it's Disney is great through the eyes of small children. Uh, my my yeah. girls are four and six years old. So it's, hops uh, are a preservative. It's good. Just I need keep, all the, keep, all yeah, the yeah, beer. Keep drinking IPAs. Yeah, you'll exactly. be fine. Yeah. You know, and speaking of IPAs, it was funny. You know, God bless uh, my dad, beer dad, by the way. He picked up a uh, four-pack of beer from Aldi, a, uh, a IPA. Okay. It, it tasted about as good as you'd expect a beer from <laughs> okay. Aldi to taste. Right. So, um, yeah. So I've heard that there's occasionally diamonds in the rough. That you can get some, out, some crazy so. German beers that you usually can't find anywhere else. It's like I'll see them and I'll look on Untapped and like no one's checked into them in America. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. But uh, this one was not uh, was not great. I don't want to name the, the beer. Well, that's Trader Joe's stuff. has their house brand that I think it's Unibrew does some mm-hmm. of theirs. They have a, they a vintage ale they put out, yeah. a Christmas, Christmas ale that they put Christmas out each year that's really good. Well, there it's you nice. go. Really so. Shopping so, for beer at TJ's and Aldi's. How about it? So, so Aldi beer is like a Dale papaya. It's not, uh, papaya. Yeah, that doesn't, don't I don't like fresh papaya, <laughs> much less nails. So. <laughs> it's not Absolutely. even good. Well, what about you, Tim? You guys uh, so went, uh, we went did. It was, it was all about festivals this weekend. So we went down to 420 Fest. We'll talk a little more about that as uh, we get into the show. But we enjoyed some beers down there, really good ones. Uh, Cambium, which is Sweetwater Woodlands uh, House mm-hmm. Base, their base beer. And they had fruited variants of that, which was uh, really, really good. Also had a Creature Comfort, so I went over to their anniversary. Enjoyed a lot of good beers there. And they've got... They call it um, uh, the Infusion Bar, the uh, uh, Athena Infusions Athena. Yeah. Bar. And they had one called Smokehouse Shandy that had okay. Georgia apple, c- apple cider vinegar, habanero pepper, lemon, and sea salt. Interesting. And I wasn't sure what to think about that, but it was fantastic. Well, they've done a nice job with those Athenians because last year they did a, like, a, like a tiki bar variant of, mm-hmm. of them too. So that's Pain pretty killer. cool. They had painkiller on again. Was good. They had the Awaken My Love Stout with some habanero peppers in it, which wow. was really nice. Very so nice. Very nice. That was it. Enjoyed that. I got to check out their Southern Mill location, their new brewery location. Okay. okay. And go to beerguysradio.com. we got some pics up there if you want to check it out. That sounds good. Brian, what about yourself? So I went to the 420 Fest, enjoyed that a great deal. Uh, they they had, also had some neat Corsair barrel beers there. That was, it was fun, the, uh, obviously, the Campion. Uh, in, in between that and just today, uh, I, I, I cracked open a few. I had a Torch Stop Weary Eyes, uh, very nice, very mm-hmm. orangey and soft, very good beer. Um, a Wild Leap Upright Double IPA and uh, a few other things. I, I even opened up a, uh, a Bell's Black Note t- uh, from 2017. So that was, that was a really nice beer. I, I, it's easy to forget how nice that is because yeah. we chase other adjuncts, but that's a nice one when you have a chance to open it. Yeah, and it's so funny because, you know, we talk about that, you know, three or four years ago. That was something that you just had to get, you know, wait in line to get. But, uh, you know, yeah, you can find it. Um, it's not as easy not to as find easy, but yeah. as, as some other stuff, but it's still... Yeah, it's it's easier than it was for sure. Oh know, yeah, and I might have had some more of those M forty threes. I might have. Some may have, have had that. May have. have. Okay. All right. That's a good beer. <laughs> Nothing wrong beer. with that. All right. Let's check out this week's Truck and Taps beers of the week. <laughs> Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap beer of the week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truck and Tap dot com. All right, Tim. What do we got? So we did a little pregame before we dive into our Belgians here. We got yep. a couple from Creature Comfort. So thank you so much, Creature Comfort, for sending these over. We had Legend has it, which is their new collaboration 
with Run the Jewels, their second collab. That is a Hoppy Pilsner, and it's fantastic. It's I great. liked it a lot. Yeah. So we also got to try their Illuminating the Fog, which is a hazy, let's say, does that say India Pale Ale is an IPA? Correct, yes. Brian? Yeah, it does say in, India yeah. Pale Ale on it, yeah. So we enjoyed that as well. And then we're going to get into all kinds of Belgian. Craig, you brought several. I did. Brian, you did too. We, we have no shortage of Belgian beers. Just a couple. Uh, the the what, Straffa Hendrik. That you brought? Am I saying that right? I'm so scared on this episode with all these Belgian names. Well, so. I'm, I'm no expert, but okay. uh, but Strafa is street. So, yes, it's uh, okay. Strafa Hendrick is correct. So we've got some from there. we got a few Georgia American interpre- interpretations, like Jailhouse's two-year sentence, which is a Flanders with cherry. Uh, I brought a um, Pit and Pendulum cherry from Sweetwater. Mm-hmm. And I think, uh, Brian, you brought their 21st anniversary Oud Bruin. Uh, yes, I believe I have that. Yeah, so we have a just fantastic. We have Orval over there, and just all kinds of Belgian and American interpretations of Belgian beers. We'll be speaking Flemish by the time the show is over. It's it'll sound like it at least. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. All right, let's check out this week's headlines. What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. What's going on, Brian? All right, so the big news this week, a local Georgia brewery, New Realm Brewing, has bought Green Flash's brewing equipment, and this was all over the internet like a second after it, the deal had closed. So I think the auction closed on the 11th of this month, and uh, the equipment is from the, that Virginia Beach facility, which went under auction. We talked about that earlier this year. And uh, we don't have uh, a lot of details on exactly what was, what was involved with the price or what was sold, but we know there's a 50-barrel brew house, 15 fermentation tanks that range in size on up to 250 barrels, there's a bottling line, a kegging line, and there's a bunch of other brewing equipment that went with it. And there's been speculation that though the facility cost $20 million to build, uh, it may have been purchased. All that gear may have been around $4 million. We're not 100% sure on that. That's just speculation. And, and that's really a heck of a deal, getting it at an auction. I mean, the, the huge discount and the tariffs that just went in. I mean, that just makes it – you can't sure. not buy that stuff. So so moving on, we've got uh, Sony is suing Knee Deep Brewing over their Breaking Bud IPA. <laughs> The studio is claiming that the beer intentionally imitates the Breaking Bad logo, duh, and other design elements to capitalize on the fame of the show, and that the copying is gratuitous, whatever that means. So, uh, yeah, trademark in, uh, infringement, dilution, face, fake designation or false designation of origin, and, of course, they're looking for an injunction against the brand and uh, money. Of damages. course. Now, now it's funny because uh, you know I believe I read from, from the uh, guys from Knee Deep. They said that they kind of got tacit approval from Sony about doing this before they went ahead and ran with it. And so they're kind of surprised that uh, that Sony came back with this uh, with this lawsuit. So what happened is they they came out with it and Sony contacted them and they said they appreciated it. They loved what they were doing and it was it was an executive they talked to. They didn't name who it was, but they, he said, "Yeah, you guys really like what we're you know that's a great shout out to us." And they even looked into some sort of a formal partnership. At, on this like three some odd years ago when it came out but uh you know things change management yeah. changes so i'm guessing that's what i was wondering if they got yeah. some new heads in there that or, or if they realized that of course needy is starting to cold. expand a little more of its of its distribution so they that actually happens that a lot too. small yeah. companies will be kind of uh i guess under the radar for lack of a better term one we talk about a lot brian cigar world tatuaje yeah and they use the fleur de lis as part of their packaging which is a big brand and uh until they grew there was no concern, then there was lawsuits. I hate when that happens. Absolutely. Yep. No lawsuits here. We're going to take a quick break right now. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. Of course, we're on the socials, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter as well. Coming right back, we'll be talking with Craig Torres from Hop City and Jen Price with the Chick's Guide to Beer and the Atlanta Beer Boutique. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their taproom in Marietta to taste and see. Also, visit their barrel room with an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Oh, God, here we go again. Dork alert. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Visit us online at beerguysradio.com. 
If you missed part of the show or you just want to relive it, head to iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcast, and uh, check us out. Subscribe, listen, leave us a review. We really appreciate it. So we are talking Belgian beers here. We're mm-hmm. sipping some right now, a Saison DuPont, which is phenomenal. We have Craig Torres of Hop City, Jen Price, Chick's Guide to Beer, Atlanta Beer Boutique, and we're going to drink and talk Belgian beer. Yeah, and like you said, uh, the beer that we've cracked open right now is a Saison DuPont, an oldie but a goodie. It's funny, we were talking during the break that uh, you know a lot of these great classic beers – Sometimes, or oftentimes, get overlooked because there's just so many beers out there to drink these days. That was the prompting for this show. Is yeah. Brian and I talking one night about how, gosh, probably five years ago, not really that long ago, Belgians, if you wanted a huge variety, I mean, there was, there was a good amount of American beer. But, uh, man, I drank so many more Belgians even five years ago. And as it's gone, I realized that, and it's not intentional, it's just that we have so much Georgia beer or other American beers coming our way. That uh, that we go all we go all over those, which I mean, understandable. But yeah, I wanted to revisit some classic. No, it's a classic. Ones that we love absolutely, here, so. absolutely. So, Craig, tell us a little bit about Saison Dupont, please. For sure. So, uh, Saison Dupont is uh, widely credited as being the original uh, Saison. So, so what is a Saison? A uh, Saison is a farmhouse beer. Um, traditionally, it's a, a basically an open barn sa- uh, fermentation beer. So, it's something. At the end of the harvest, you just kind of sweep all your leftover grain into a pile. You'd ferment it, and uh, spring would come, and boom, there we, there'd be a beer. Um, and Saison de Pont is the first commercially available uh, version of that in uh, roughly 1848. Um, and I say roughly because there's no real um, uh, definitive definition of when the first Saison de Pont was actually available. But it's since become not just the yardstick beer for that category, but actually uh, has fomented multiple ver- variations of that, including dry hop versions and holiday versions and so on. Awesome. Now, for those that don't know Craig Torres, the awesome, amazing Craig Torres. Yes. And Hop City. If you're not in the Atlanta area, maybe you don't know Hop City if you haven't been through. Uh, but Hop City, craft beer and wine, home brewing supplies. You have uh, two locations in Atlanta now. That's one correct. in Birmingham, Alabama. You have a third Hop City coming to uh, what's called the Lee and White development here in Atlanta, which is kind of becoming a beer mecca. I know. We're really excited for about Sarah, that. Yeah. And yeah. you have Barley Garden Kitchen up in Alpharetta, Georgia, correct. which uh, you're venturing into the restaurant scene, correct? I know. I never saw that coming. You're so. everywhere. Well, exactly. All, all thanks to beer, right? Would never go that far. How uh, about that? Yeah. So, uh, so first off, we're in uh, Monday Night Brewing right now. Uh, quick shout out to Monday Night. Uh, they really have made Lee and White something to, to talk about. Uh, that's currently their second location. They do a lot of their sours and their barrel-aged stuff there. Um, mm-hmm. We're going to be their next-door neighbor, uh, and we could not be more excited. That's the uh, the west side of the Atlanta Beltline. So if you happen to be riding your bike, running, whatever exercise you happen to be into. Whatever you do. Yep. Uh, just swing on uh, off the Beltline, and you're going to see both Monday Night and us and Wild Heaven and um, all sorts of great uh, banyan, uh, banyan roots, roots, roots yeah. coming over. No, right? Gelato and pickles and cheese. I think like, ASW, literally ASW Distillery oh is going to be there. Correct. So, yes. it's like eating, drinking, or you know, falling down, uh, you'll be fine. Yes. You'll, you'll enjoy. But it. not to worry. There's a Marta station right there, so you can take the train. Or you can have someone drive you if you don't bike or. I think or I'm going to get some space over there, and you know those Japanese pod hotels. Yeah, where it's just, just move that up there. I'm oh, just going to put a pod hotel, hotel over yeah. there. Yeah. I, yeah, I totally support sad. that. Yeah, yeah. See, just absolutely. falling down and into a pod, and you you sleep it off, and you're there. Good. You go. So so now this journey, like you said, I mean, you, you're just you're into a lot of things in the craft beer world here in in uh, the southeast, but Belgian beers are really where you got your start and love for it, correct? For sure. So so I uh, I'm old. I'm 50 years old, and uh, when I first got started, I I. Um, I really enjoyed, I was in the Coast Guard, and I got a chance to travel all over the world, and so Germany, Belgium, England, those are the spots that I first discovered beer that did not taste like beer at home, and uh, I, I credit Chimay, um, frankly, it was Chimay, Chimay White, was my very first craft beer, if you will, um, and once I found that, it was hard to go back to, like, you know, Pabst. Uh, no offense, Pabst. Sure, um, no. But, uh, yeah, once, once you have a Chimay White, it's hard to go back. Yeah. Um, so uh, I deep dove into Belgian beer, and I discovered that that was really where my palate was. And to this day, I, I credit the fact that Hop City exists is probably due to Belgian beer. That's, I mean, there was a lot of places like that. We talked to the owners of the brick store, and they said, you know, at the time, uh, before, the, before the ABV cap was raised, it was super limited. But, you know, once that 6% cap went, Belgian beers was where it's at. Oh, for sure. So. Yeah, and, and mind you, there were some real um, clinkers. 
clunkers, yeah. bad beers in that uh, initial rollout of uh, uh, high ABV beers, over 6% beers. Um, I remember some, um, uh, there were beers out of uh, Rochester that were just absolutely terrible, available in the Atlanta market right after that uh, ABV lifted. But uh, the best part about that was the fact that Chimay was readily available in bottles and West Mall and just basically Roquefort, every, every great Belgian beer was available within about six months after that ABV lifted. Fantastic. Absolutely. Now, uh, Jen, for those that aren't, that may have not ex- explored Belgian beers, what's a good place to start there? Um, you mean like a good place to go to to start? The, the beers. What kind of beers? Uh, we could travel Belgium. to Belgium either way. We could go yeah, there. where's that's, a good place a to start? Place to start. Exactly. I, I think a white. I think a Belgian white is mm-hmm. a good, safe place to start. You know, you won't... You, if you're averse to hops, it's safe and smooth and easy to, easy to get down. You've got a little more flavor if you've been sipping. I think so. Bud Lights, Miller Lights, and all that. Absolutely. You can step up to it's that. It's a good gateway, I think. Right. Without a palate shock right. there. So. Yeah. With maybe a little bit of you know herbs and spices in it, mm. you know, but very mm. mild, very very approachable. I yeah. would so. completely agree with Jen on this. Uh, so, so I can't uh, – owning a number of bars, uh, so how many people walk up and say, I want a Blue Moon? Okay. So, mind you, Miller Coors owns Blue Moon, and once upon a time, that was a craft beer. But what is it ultimately? What, is, what are the roots of, of Blue Moon? It's a Belgian wit, right. coriander, orange peel. Mm-hmm. All of that's classic Belgian choices. Yeah. So if you go to like a St. Bernardus wit or, mm-hmm. um, I mean, pick, pick your, your... Or even an American version, an Allagash White. Allagash right. White, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So easy. Right. Rob Todd is, if, if not the single best Belgian-style brewer in this country, I would actually go further back and say Sellis White. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I was just that. thinking yeah. that. Wow. Pierre Sellis. Yeah. Like, he really innovated the Belgian wit in this country. And uh, ironically, we talked Did about... We just, I just name-checked St. Bernardus. When he, his family sold the recipe for Sellis White to St. Bernardus. Uh, Didn't so they just you, relaunch? Wow. The they Celis? did. So okay. his daughter now owns the name Celis, and so they have indeed relaunched in Texas. Very cool. So us old, us old my, guys get excited about that I have to get my stuff, Texas buddies to hook there me you up go. there. Because so. that was one of the first ones that I ever had was a Celis White. It was, it was such a good beer. I was like, yeah, oh, l- Long before Blue Moon was a thing, mm-hmm. Celis White was truly the, the first Belgian wit I ever had that just blew my, my socks off. Very interesting. Now, something I find interesting with Belgian beers is – Right now in American craft beer, it's always what's what's new, what's next, what's hot. Uh, there's some beers that even a few years ago were flying off the shelves. People chasing them, American beers that set around now. We, um, you know, big stouts that that rotates a lot with these the IPAs, the Northeast IPAs, and that you really have to keep something new flowing all the yeah. time in order to stay on top of that. But Belgian beer, for the most part, is the exact opposite. I mean, some of these recipes are literally hundreds, thousands. No, and hundreds. Then we go back oh. that far yet? Yeah. So, so the origin of Belgian sort of brewing tradition, at least uh, on paper, dates back to the 12th century. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't really have so German beer is sort of the um, in Europe at least the the, the um, archetypal sort of home for craft beer, um, if you will. Uh, so Belgian brewery started in the 12th century, and it was almost entirely based on funding the Crusades. So you were trying to fund um, your military ventures out of state or out of the country. You would brew a beer, and you would sell it, and you'd use those funds to fund the church and or the military you were supporting. Which um, is much the same reason you started selling beer, correct? Yes, I, I have my Absolutely. own militia, the cur- and it's yes. fantastic. <laughs> no, the they're just the militia. They're just to guard your beer, though, right? Yes. Exactly. It's really self protection. It's, it's very intimidating going to a store. Get the yeah. guy with the with the pole arms and stuff right. in front of them. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. So, just so most people don't realize that the first like documented Trappist beer didn't start to the late eighteen hundreds. All right. Okay. So West Mall was your very first official Trappist beer. Very cool. Well, Craig, we're going to go ahead and continue this conversation coming up in our next break. We'll also be talking with Jen Price, uh, the author of The Chick's Guide to Beer and uh, the Atlanta Beer Boutique. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show, beerguysradio.com. Go ahead and subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be back right after this.
It's Aaron and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Next Friday is Hawaiian Shirt Day. So, you know, if you want to, go ahead and uh, wear a Hawaiian shirt and jeans. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. BeerGuysRadio.com is our website. We're going to go get back into the conversation in just a moment. But first, looking to open a brewery or brew pub in the Atlanta area? Then take a look at the park at Georgetown. This unique community will feature a collection of restaurants along with a craft brewery located within the new J.W. Holmes luxury development, Dunwoody Green. Conveniently located less than a half a mile from 285, this enclave of restaurants will be the gathering place in Dunwoody. Whether meeting old friends or making new ones, the park at Georgetown will be the place to share a great meal and to build lasting memories. If you're planning to open a brewery or brew pub, the park at Georgetown may be your new home. Crim and Associates, the developer of the park at Georgetown, wants to talk to you. For more information, call Stephen St. Paul at 404-256-2960, extension 5. That's Stephen St. Paul, 404-256-2960, extension 5. Now, I want to start a brewery. I know. That's a, and I want to start at the... At, uh, We're down. The grow, Maybe the, a Belgian-inspired brewery, too, all right? Have we made enough money to do that yet? Because we totally should. Yeah. yeah. We should. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What could go wrong? Absolutely. So. There you go. Well, we're back talking Belgian beers, and uh, Craig, just before we went to break there, you actually mentioned a uh, buzzword in the Belgian community. You said Trappist. There. I did say Trappist. So what is a Trappist ale? So a Trappist ale is an ale that is made in- entirely and exclusively by monks, and specifically Benedictine monks, and the beer cannot actually touch anyone who is not an actual member of the cloth. Okay. Uh, so uh, there are really not very many of those in the world. Uh, there are only six of them in Belgium, and there are nine of them in the world. Um, can anyone name a couple of those just for fun? Mm-hmm. I, I, Sh- would you know, Sh- 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 be one of them? West Wetterland? West Wetterland is one of them. Absolutely, yeah. Jen. Thank you. Okay. In uh, America, we have one. We do. New, a couple we have two, years. actually, in America. Spencer. Spencer. There's we have a two? One in, we have two there's now? another one? Yeah, really? there is. There's one in California, and Spencer is I missed the California come one. Come on. It doesn't come to Georgia, though, unfortunately. Okay. All right. I need to get on that news. Spencer is in Massachusetts, and it's actually really good beer. It is. It's very nice. But no, so... Obviously, Chimay mm-hmm. being, I, I name-checked that earlier, uh, West Federland, West, West Mall. Mall. Exactly. Um, I actually get a cheat, cheat and look at my notes. Oh, there you Orval. go. you got to do okay. it, man. Is, is Orval one of them as yes. well? Yes. Orval is. Yes, yes for sure. Um, but the one that everybody misses, Ackel. So mm-hmm. Don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, A-C-H-E-L or a- something? A-C-H-E-L, exactly. Yeah. It's great beer. Uh, mm-hmm. But Konensoven is just over the border. Um so that's another fantastic Interesting. Yeah. What and makes actually technically in trap setting. because these are highly sought after. They're very well regarded. Right. The monks obviously know their stuff. Yeah. Uh, what? What? Yeah. Eh, they've been practicing a while. Yeah, right? they've certainly so, been practicing passed down yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times the beers you'll see you'll see from them may be uh, single, double, triple, you know, or a, a quad Belgian strong dark. I guess it depends on. Right. So so the traditional four beers that they make. Um, the single is what they make for their own consumption. So a Belgian style single is a low, typically two to four percent ABV, easy drinking. It's kind of a replacement for food. So uh, often they don't even distribute that outside of the, the the monastery. So they'll just drink that as their lunch beer, or dinner beer, or what have you. Is that what they call a patter's beer? It is exactly a patter's okay. beer. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and then a double would be a dark in the glass, uh, relatively low ABV, six to six and a half percent. Um, so um, West Mall makes. In my mind, at least, the, the, the definitive double. Um, and if you have not tried a double uh, and you like malty beers, that's where you want to go. Uh, Trippels would be the next level of that. That's in that 8 to 10% ABV level. Um, I, in fact, we're drinking right now the um, 
um, Chippewa Chippewa Caramel. Carmelite, which mm-hmm. is one of my absolute favorites. It's sometimes. delicious, yeah. Oh, so good. Um, is it Chimay Red? Is that their their triple? Chimay White would be the triple. Chimay, oh, because the yeah. red's the double. Then, the right? red is the, the double. The blue's the quad. The quad. That's correct. Yeah. Um, so, and that's a, a great place to. Uh, it's, a, it's probably the most accessible of the uh, Belgian styles or the Trappist styles. Um, light in the glass, so you know, obviously clear, easy to drink, um, but it's kind of dangerous. At like I said, this one's at just over eight percent. Yeah. Oh, you'd, wow. you'd never this guess is? that. See, no. yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, she's, Jen's on her Hold fourth up. one. Yeah. She's going to be Jen, checked Jen's out. counting soon, these things. So, yeah. I, I don't know if she'll make it home, but, uh, right. you know. Uber. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but, no, it's a, great, it's a great style to get started on. And then, of course, the quad, the uh, f- uh, four-time fermented, um, typically big. Uh, I describe it as dark fruit uh, dates, uh, you know, just big and uh, relatively dark in the glass, 10 12% all day long. Yeah. Uh, and those so, are the, yeah, the big celebration beers, and, and those correct. are the ones and, that, yeah. Yeah, most of the time, historically, they brew those once a year, more mm-hmm. f- usually for a king's birthday or a celebration of some wow. sort. Uh, the Pope's, um, uh, what do they call that? Uh, the benediction. You become a Pope. Benediction, benediction, not the but, christening, uh, that's not right. Uh, yeah. Exactly, there's a thing for that. <laughs> the christening is good, that'll be anyway, good, yes. Pope's, Pope's Day? Yeah, Pope's Day, Pope's Day. Pope's exactly, Day. Yeah. whatever Day. that is. So, Strafa Hendrik is what I brought today. Uh, that was... Uh, if not my absolute favorite quad, it's certainly one of the top three. So speaking of that and that being your favorite quad, uh, I think kind of common, I don't know if knowledge should be the right word, common accepted in the beer community is Westy 12 is the yes. the premier quad. So, it is. Now, I would argue it is the premier right. quad purely because it's limited and hard to get. Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. That, that counts so, for a lot. Absolutely. Of the six Belgian-made uh, Trappist beers, it's the only one not available in our country. Okay. Uh, it's easily the hardest to get. You have to make an appointment at the monastery to buy the beer. Um, you have to book that at least two weeks in advance. So you and I just travel into Belgium just for kicks. Just we, we can't through. just walk can't up to the brewery in. and go, hey, hey, can I get a Westie? No, it doesn't work that way. Not even if we tell them we know Craig Torres? Uh, yeah. spe- especially, <laughs> especially, especially then. <laughs> they lock the doors that, and call the gendarmes. That's more of a four-week wait. <laughs> at, at <laughs> exactly. um, so, yeah, it, it, so I think that's probably why that beer is so um, coveted, so, so well-regarded. The irony, of course, you remember, uh, I don't know, five years ago, it was available in our country just one time. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so they were trying to pay for a new roof on the monastery. Uh, uh, and so they really had a one time only uh, North American release. Um, they actually brewed that specific beer over at St. Bernardus. Okay. And yeah, uh, the legend has it. Now, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm just saying, I'm not an expert, um, that uh, St. Bernardus actually captured the yeast that they used that made that <laughs> beer unique. Uh oh. And uh, Abbott 12 is actually. Uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, Westy. Because wow. for quite a while back, that was outsourced to San Bernardus. It then was. Then they took it back. and So the recipes are, like I said, either identical or very similar. Sure, if and nothing they each else, put they're little, incredibly similar. And they each have their own little touch on them. They mm-hmm. may make some differences right. there. So I, 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 dr- I blind taste things for a living. I can't tell the difference. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. just saying. All right. So a more maybe controversial question, is Westy 12 the best Westy? I wow. don't think so. I, uh, I, I actually prefer their lower gravity offerings. Yeah. So Westy 10, I think, is a much, much, much better beer. That's Brian, when you went over, you brought back we, yeah, the, we, the we, line up there. So. We tried all of them. They're all very well made. Mm-hmm. They're, they're all really good. All phenomenal beers. You, exactly oh, not one like of them that. is bad. So. And I don't want to paint. Honestly, I've yet to have a, a, a Trappist beer that I didn't like. just mm. absolutely love. So. Yeah. So what's your second favorite after after the the, the Straff Hendrick uh, quad? Right. So so the Goon Are we going to open the Straff Hendrick or is that just open, no, a, no, a display bottle? It's tempting to display bottle. What do we have what, going there on? There we go. Oh, look out. There it goes. Oh, yeah. uh, that's, that's, the, that's the good stuff. Fantastic. I love the sound effects. Um, yep. So uh, that's a sound effect, by the way. I didn't do that. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. From yeah, the board, crazy. we're okay. We can do that here. It's 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 allowed. Fantastic. But yes. We're in a brewery. For that's that's true. Exactly. Um, but so, uh, but yeah. So um, so the Guten Corollas is probably my second favorite Belgian quad. Uh, the Van de Kaisen Blau, and I know yes. we have one of those here in a bag we somewhere. Do. Uh-huh. We do. Um, that beer is also spectacular. Never uh, had and that. then honestly, the, the Chimay Blue is my third favorite. They're all three of those are amazing beers. Little known is that the Guten Corollas is actually served in Golden Corral. Uh, no, yeah. it's not. No. I'm sorry. Let me get, the, let me get some of that prime rib. And a, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And a, and a uh, I need the corral. salad bar <laughs> and uh, a quad, please. Exactly. You know, I imagine a golden corral in Belgium could actually be pretty good uh, with, I, I, if I'm you put their that. interpretation. Absolutely. Some of those fries, so. right, that we were See, talking about? Right? The shaved, yes. uh, you know. Absolutely. Mayo Sounds and the good shaved to me. Truffles, mm-hmm. truffles. truffles. There we go. Yeah. Oh, that's good. So we're going to make a little jump or twist here. Yep. We're going to move on to some Belgian styles that are actually still pretty hot in the U.S. right now. 
Sour beers. Yep. So oh, we've got... Uh, couldn't be any hotter, really. Goose Lambic. Uh, lots of variations on those. You get a Creek. Get a right. Frambois. What have you. So, so so let's talk about what actually started in Belgium. Uh, so the Lambic style is a fruit fermentation. Um, and there are a lot of great examples of that. But we also, uh, as you know, uh, the... Uh, um, the Flemish sour or the Flemish mm-hmm. red is maybe the prototypical. Um, you know, if, if I had to pick a single sour that I would refer to, um, this is Belgian beer. That's probably where I'd go. And we're going to wrap up our conversation with Belgian beers with Craig Torres from Hop City. We'll also have Jen Price, the Chick's Guide to Beer author with the Atlantic Beer Boutique as well. You'll listen to the Beer Guys Radio Show, beerguysradio.com. We'll be back right after this. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the Reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowah watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. To be the man, you gotta beat the man. Woo! Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are talking Belgian beers today. We're drinking a lot of great Belgian beers. We have mm-hmm. Craig Torres of Atlanta and Birmingham's. Birmingham's. Birmingham Hop City. Something like that, yes. And we At have Jen multiple Price Birmingham's. Here. Birmingham's. Yeah. That's right. That's right. It's like Walmart's. Birmingham's. That's right. That's right. And we have Jen Price. With the Chicks Guide to Beer, and that is Chicks. That is a plural right. on that one. Yes. So, and the Atlanta Beer Boutiques. Is that That's correct? Right. There you just go. One of them. Just one. Not now, yet. Not, 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 not even yet. Not yeah. yet, huh? We're getting there. But uh, we've got, we've done a lot of talking here. We have a lot more to cover, but we don't have as much time as we have conversation topics. But we were talking a little bit about Goose and Lambic there, Craig. So, uh, Goose Lambic, can you tell us a little bit about what those styles are? So I, I think you almost need to start the conversation Ooh. with the uh, the Oud Brun. And uh, so Rodenbach, to me, is the, the mm. classic, the original, if you will, um, manufacturer of, of that style of beer. Um, it's a uh, red in a glass, sour, um, moderately malty, but uh, finishes with this big, huge sort of, um, uh, they're almost like somebody pinching your cheek, um, yep. if you will. Um, that's where I'd want you to start your adventure in, in Belgian beers. Uh, lambics are specifically fruit fermentations, um, and cherry is probably the most popular style of that, okay. but they can go all sorts of directions. You can go peche, you can go uh, frambois, which is a fancy word for raspberry. Um, peche being a fancy word for fish. Yeah, well, of course. Sure. So, yes. of course. Or peach, or peach. but yeah. fish. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, I, thought, sure. I thought that was Whatever. the name of an actor, yeah. right? Exactly. could be any of those things. Uh, cassis, which is, uh, you mm-hmm. know, current. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, so essentially it's a fruit that's been uh, open to the public, if you will, uh, wide open to the sky, and uh, all sorts of different bugs get into it. It ferments. It comes out sour, but um, with still that representation of the fruit in it. Now, we actually just opened an Oud Brun from an American brewer here. I know. That's exciting. So this is Sweetwater's 21st anniversary uh-huh. beer and something we've talked about a lot here lately. They're Woodlands. So yep. this is yep. one of their Woodlands beers, one of the funky, crazy beers they're doing there in the Woodlands. I was over at the Woodlands earlier today, and, uh, yeah, I, I'm so excited about what they're producing there. Uh, they have more barrels than they've ever had before. They have yes. a boysenberry beer on draft right now, um, a current beer. They have all sorts of fun things. They had a very interesting beer on draft there over 420 Fest weekend, too. Mm. I'm just saying. Yes, they did. Yes. I was really looking forward stuff. to trying it. <laughs> but some of the bi- the famous, and I'm going to blaze through this. We're going to have to have you back to talk about this more in the future. But uh, some of the famous, well-known, sought-after uh, sour brewers from Belgium, Cantillon, right. uh, Drafontainen, we have Boone. Uh, we have a few of those various ones with us here. But we talked with uh, Dan Shelton. From nice. Shelton Brothers, who brought the beer into the U.S. Is that guy and a nut or what? He's crazy. We oh, had yeah. a great conversation. Yeah. But he was telling us when he brought this beer in, people were sending it back. This beer is bad. Yeah. No, so, so it was not well received in the U.S. at first. And now these bottles are, they disappear if they do happen to hit a shelf. 
in the yeah. U.S. They sell literally for multiple hundreds of dollars uh, on the secondary market, as they say. Very high trade value. So these are what was once unwanted is now highly sought after. So I, I don't need you to tell me that. I mean, I don't. you don't need me, I should say, to tell you the Shelton Brothers story. But uh, back in the 80s, nobody really wanted these beers at all. Right. And uh, yeah. I'm so excited that there's actually a market for them now. Um, Cantillon, I'll get them in two, maybe three times a year. They're literally gone within two or three days every yeah, time I get right. them. Excellent. Well, cool, Craig. We got to wrap up this conversation. Like I said, got to have you back uh, on we the do. show a little bit. We later haven't on, even but, touched uh, on American brewers doing Belgian style, so maybe that could be a show in itself. There we go. We can come back. We'll get on it. All right. Excellent. Well, cool. Well, Tim, uh, you talked about uh, touched on Sweetwater, the Woodlands. We did. We wanted to talk about our trip to 420. Yeah, Fest absolutely. A bit, so. And you guys survived, which was good. We did survive. Yeah. We had a great time. We were out there Friday and Saturday, 420 and 421. That's right. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I mean, just such a good time. And Brian, you want to give a little recap of the event there? Yeah, so we, we spent a good amount of the time in the uh, the Sweetwater Experience tent, and that that was kind of the place to be, in my opinion. They had the beer selection was was my favorites. You know, they had all of the cambium variants, the tangerine, the passion fruit, the mango. Those were all really nice. Uh, big shout out to that that tangerine. That was uh, that, that was, was really good. That was yeah. really nice. They had the Corsair whiskey barrels, which I'm a fan of Corsair. Or so they had their like triple smoked with a Berliner Weiss. That was really cool. They had a Rye Wild and a I think a, a uh, Rum Dark Wild beer as well. So okay. that was interesting. And one of my favorites, the Cocoa Hill, big beer, big, big, decadent beer. So chocolatey, so good. And uh, I mean, there's so many of them. There's the MMV Pills, which was a That was a surprise. That was good. That's yeah. a collaboration with the Bearded Iris mm-hmm. on Italian Pilsner, Hoppy Pilsner. That was yeah. nice. Oh, that, yeah. was, that was super drinkable. I could just hang out there and drink all day. And they it, did a lot of other events in that experience tent over the weekend. Sure, right? sure. They, they had a uh, beer and cheese tasting. They had a, uh, a malt tea tasting with uh, River Bre- Riverbend Malt House out of Asheville, North Carolina, which I think is a cool idea, especially if you're like a home brewer. You want to get oh, to yeah. know a malt or a maltster's uh, product and how it's going to affect your beers. I mean, that's, that's the way to go. I mean, it's, it's a great idea. They had a bunch of different shows being recorded, you know, music shows. And of course we did a show there as well, or did, uh, did, a, did an did interview it. with yeah. uh, Nick knock and Nick B. So that's something. And we put that catch. out as a podcast extra. So you can check it out hear what that was all about. Sure. And uh, speaking of a uh, little extra, extra activity we did, we, uh, we ran into a few bands uh, that we enjoyed there, and we actually got a chance to sit down with uh, Luthi, the band Luthi, and uh, a couple of their band members, and we talked about beer with them, and they're very into beer. Very and, into beer. Uh, out of Nashville, band out yes, of Nashville, we did the interview, and that interview, the video, is on our YouTube channel, so we don't utilize as much as we should, we but should. we got some video, sat down with them, so... Go to uh, YouTube, look for Beer Guys Radio, and check out our interview with the band Luthi. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. So Now, you know, Brian mentioned some of the beers there in the Sweetwater Experience tent. Uh, several of those were from the Sweetwater Woodlands. We've talked a lot about the Woodlands lately. We gave away a membership to the Woodlands Circle last week. And uh, there's just uh, an amazing array of beers that they're doing there. So if you want the very best, most limited, coming out of the Woodlands, join the Woodlands Circle. Your membership will get you uh, six beers. Six bottled beers, something that's unique, different from their everyday offerings. I also get you a bar tab at the Woodlands Bar, which is a cool place to hang out and try some of the stuff that hasn't made it to bottles yet. You get a very cool, very nice, fancy stemware glass and uh, some other cool perks. You'll get emails of special mm-hmm. events and different things that they do. So if you want to check it out, just go to uh, sweetwaterbrew.com slash club there'll be more info there you can join up right now they still have a few memberships left for series one which is the chattahoochee series uh they also have memberships open for series two which will be start releasing this summer so again go to sweetwaterbrew.com slash club and sign up now sounds good now here on the beer guys radio show we've got jen price and she is uh, the author of chicks the chicks guide to beer the chicks guide to beer and I didn't right make there. that up. I didn't, I didn't want to. Don't want to get in trouble for that name because that was you, Jen. That, uh, that that's said that all me. me. Okay, it's good. All me. I'm a chick. Excellent. So. Well, there you go. So excellent. So tell us a little bit more about uh, about the Chick's Guide to Beer and sure. what's going on there. So sure. um, it's called the Chick's Guide to Beer: Seven Simple Rules for the Beer Novice. And I wrote it um, kind of as a response to a, a couple of my friends who asked me to kind of start putting some stuff on paper. I I started out hosting uh, beer tastings and events. And a lot of my customers were my friends, and naturally, the first folks come to, to support you. Yep. Um, but after those events, folks were like, hey, you should blog, you should write about this stuff. 
which I started to do. And then that kind of evolved into a book eventually. That's a very short story behind it, but. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's how I got in. Into I started writing. writing, started a blog, and turned it into a book. Well, There's the like story, it. right? Because I like, so it's a brief book. Let's let's be honest about it. Because I don't like a whole lot of reading. words. Yeah. yeah, we don't we don't need words in a book. I'm a it's blog a reader. I like yeah. to read very short, digestible things. Yep. And so I just pretty much compiled all of my blog entries into a book. Okay. Now, yeah. something I saw looking uh, up info on the book and reading reviews on it, a lot of people use the word approachable. Yes. And I think that's something that, you know, with anything that there's kind of a inner club, mm-hmm. people can feel alienated from For sure. It. And not even intentionally sometimes. Sometimes intentionally. There's jerks in any hobby. Mm-hmm. Uh, but approachability was one thing that was mentioned there. Was that a big goal with what you did? Absolutely. And I'll just say right out off the gate, you know, I have been, I've had a great experience with folks in the craft beer industry. So I don't think it's inherently, um, you know, a jerk field kind of, kind of place, but... I did want to make sure that people felt um, that they could read something easy and not feel like they um, were not smart enough to read it or sure. not feel like it was dumbed down too much either. Yeah. So I, I had tried to create a balance between those two things. But I think it can be intimidating for someone trying to get interesting in something, sure. you know, and you see this big, huge list of 20 different beers that you don't know anything about. Oh, and, my gosh. You know, if you think you're going to get made fun of, if you say, I like Bud Light, what can I drink here? And, Absolutely. You know, but but the industry in itself is, is really kind of approachable. But, I think but so. But it can, it can be intimidating yeah. for somebody who doesn't know. That's I remember starting home brewing, and I got a Mr. Beer kit, and I, I saw terms when I was looking up info online like DME, HME, IBUs. I really had no idea about those terms right. at the time. So I went into this homebrewing forum, and I see people talking stuff that sounds just like Greek to me. Absolutely. But I kind of rolled my sleeves up. I'm like, I'm going to jump in here, and if I look if I look like an idiot, at least I'll learn something yeah, in exactly. the process. So, exactly. Uh, but having people who do – and everybody was super cool to me. I should throw that in there, that everybody took the time and said, this will come in time. You'll learn all this stuff, but this is what this means. That, that's Absolutely. what that means. So Absolutely. It's always good to have someone, whether it's a book or a friend or both, Yeah. It can take you by the hand a little bit and show you through that, right? Yep, exactly. And that's what I hope this book can be, like a companion to to chicks out there who want to learn more about beer but just don't know where to start. Now, I see it's the chick's guide to beer, but can dudes read it as Absolutely. well? Absolutely, yeah. My friend says <laughs> no. it hurt. I have a, <laughs> right. No guys allowed. Special, no guys allowed. You need allowed. special glasses to read <laughs> yeah. it? To decode it. You need yeah, a decoder, right. so yeah. good yeah. luck with that. All right. Yeah. All right. Is that available um, for purchase somewhere? Yeah. Four hundred dollars. Book nineteen ninety five. Decoder, decoder ring five hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. It's a subscription. Yeah, um, uh, but yeah, it's cool for anyone. I mean, I, I have friends who've had their boyfriends or husbands read it, and and they found things interesting and helpful in it as well. Very cool. Now yeah. we also want to talk a little bit about kind of the other side of your beer business beer ventures yes. there so you have the atlanta beer boutique i do and uh so far but that is looking to change you've done pop-up events correct that's right that's right i love educating people and going out into the community and talking about beer and food and pairings and tastings and all kinds of stuff together so yeah right now it's in a pop-up phase but the goal is to take that into a brick and mortar oh cool now tell us i read the concept i've seen your yeah. kickstarter video and that uh what's the atlanta beer boutique because it sounds like a pretty cool place it is so it's a small um, boutique so to me that means a place that has a tailored selection of um, beers and other things that go along with beer so glassware merchandise books posters I love mm-hmm. the whole beer retail thing there you go um, and but then also that has um, I think just a, an approach to customer service that makes folks feel comfortable when they come in especially beginners very cool so and then a uh, in addition to that, a um, kind of a workshop space. So okay. I, would, I would see like a home brewing incubator kind of being okay. um, the cool. second phase of it. Well, if folks want to learn about your Kickstarter or yes. more about the Beer Boutique, how they can support or follow along, what's the best way to do that? AtlantaBeerBoutique.com. There we go. Cool. Awesome. And Craig, uh, if folks want to follow along with uh, what's going on with the Hop City World, uh, how should they do that? So the easiest way is to just check in on our website. It's HopCityBeer.com. Uh, we're on Untapped as well as Hop City Beer. Uh, I want to throw a quick um, sort of word out for those people listening this week especially. Uh, we have a really awesome event on Thursday, which is, I guess, tomorrow. Um, <laughs> yes. I lose track because, you know, the calendar, you know, whatever. I hate when that right. happens. Those yes. stinking calendars. I'm down. Oh, gosh darn it. All right. Anyway, uh, so we have Wayne Wombles 
uh, coming out from uh, Cigar City. You may know that guy. He's uh, uh, responsible for so many of amazing uh, southeastern beers. And Eric Johnson from Wild Heaven. Uh, they just came out with Southern Symphony, which is a collaboration beer. Uh, they'll both be at Hop City Midtown here on the west side, right down the street from Monday Night Brewing. Um, seven uh, to eight, just to kind of uh, talk about... Um, food pairings, but also just if you just want to talk about beer or how do you start a brewery or how you make money in the beer business, that may be a good place to start. You know, and funny, uh, coming full circle, we actually interviewed Wayne and Eric when they first put that in the barrels. So I think, yeah, as they were brewing it, that's been a year ago? Uh, It's been more than a year ago, I believe, yeah. Yeah. So So gin, chardonnay, there's like so many, there's like four different barrels involved in that beer. It's crazy. Anyway, just come meet them and uh, get to buy the beer and try the beer and whatnot. Sounds like a plan. Excellent. Well, that's going to do it for Beer Guys Radio for this week. Be sure to head to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and follow us. Also, subscribe to the Beer Guys Radio show on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, please leave us a review. It's a big help for folks to find the show. Coming up next week, we're going to be talking with Wrecking Bar, a great brew pub in the southeast of Atlanta. We'll find out uh, more about their uh, story and uh, see what's going on with them. Have a great week. Don't forget to drink local. We'll talk to you next time. Cheers. Cheers.